thank you, Montel. Uh, really excited to be here at Lina Gel Global. Allow me to share my screen so you don't feel left out on the mural. After all, this is a very diverse and inclusive um, conference. Um, Stacy, give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. Yes, thank you. Um, so like Montel mentioned, we'll try and keep the engagement via mural, but feel free if you have questions to raise them on, on chat as well. So we're just going to do a quick intro. I am Gladys uh, Ngueno, a co-founder and CEO at Agile Mavericks. Um, Agile Mavericks is an Agile training and consultancy startup offering Agile leadership. We're based here in Nairobi, Kenya, happy to connect with you globally, uh, really coaching teams around Agile principles and values. I'm joined today in this global stage by Anastasia Wanaina, who is my fellow co-founder at Agile Mavericks. Uh, perhaps you could say hi. So hi, everyone. I'm Anastasia. Excited to be here. So one of the co-founders, Agile Thank Mavericks. Yeah. Thank you, Anastasia. We're also joined by um, wildlife ecologist, Dr. Caroline Ngueno, who um, works around a tailored immersive conservation program filled with lots of wildlife experiences here. She's worked in Masai Mara and some of the local conservancies we have in Kenya. Over to you, Dr. Caroline. Hello, everyone. Excited to be in the, this agile world. And uh, apologies, my network is a little bit shaky. I hope uh, we'll stay through, we'll be agile all the way. Thank you. Indeed, right there we have wildlife conservation complementing with agile. So really today, um, the structure of our conversation, I can see lots of you joining in as animals, um, visiting elephant, visiting rhino. Feel free to click on the, on the link on chat and join in as any of the animals. And um, literally we're taking you to the African savannah, Masai Mara on a virtual space in this global stage today. So I'd invite Anastasia to take us through the check-in process. So hi everyone, I hope everyone is familiar with Mura, or if not, I'll guide you on how to do that. So I'll be checking in by telling us which world of the part, in which part of the world are you joining us from? So you will just pick and drop a drop in here and drag it to your country or to your continent, and then you can tell us where you are joining us from. So how you do that, you just pick a pin from the mirror ring and then you drag it to your continent where you are, you are joining us from. So if you, have, you are having challenges, you can kindly chat there or raise a hand and we help you. I can see many are joining us. Let me see. So we have people from Kenya, I'm from Kenya, Gladys is from Kenya. We have people from Ireland, United Kingdom, I can see from Finland, from Germany, from Beraras, okay? <laughs> Someone can correct me that. From Portugal, I can see we have people from Portugal, Finland, Germany, Oh, sorry. Keep them coming. We have one from is it Canada? Yes, we have one from Canada. Can you tell us? We also have one from South Africa. If you're having challenges, kindly let me know. Let me drop, drag mine. We have just pick and go on. Ten is up. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. We are happy to have you here. So let's explore in the wild. So Gladys, back to you. 
Thank you, Anastasia. Indeed, um, this is a global agile conference that's inclusive. Um, we'll just dive deep already into our session today, which is focused around, if you could follow my cursor on the screen, a day as wildlife research assistants. And this is um, an excursion we did with Dr. Caroline in, in the Masai Mara. So really we we're trying to understand um, the con con conversation dilemma when the conservationists like Dr. Caroline try to um, ensure we have an ecosystem balance um, whereby we have wildlife, we have uh, predators, we have prey, we have humans coexisting in an ecosystem. How do you achieve that balance? That was the complexity um, we delve into, into dealing with. So perhaps uh, Dr. Caroline, the visionary here, you could paint a, for us the picture how this conservation dilemma exists in your world. Thank you very much, Gladys. But, uh, basically, uh, our research questions uh, try to address uh, very interesting subjects. It's trying to promote positive pathways of coexistence between wildlife and people because with the increasing wildlife population, human population, the wildlife is lacking space for utilization. So the better model to ensure that our heritage is sustained in Kenya we have to look at clever ways of uh, promoting coexistence. That is people, wildlife, and uh, pe people, wildlife, and li wildlife staying in the same space and maximizing the productivity. So basically that is what we are trying to achieve using clever ways of creating that particular balance. Thank you, Dr. Caroline. Indeed, uh, last Saturday was World Biodiversity Day and the cause was how would you be part of the solution? Um, I, I, I remember if I could paint this picture for you, this is us, Agile Mavericks team in a Land Rover 6 AM, uh, moving, traversing the savannah to go to the, to the sampling plot where Dr. Caroline and her team had set out for us. So you could look at it as if you, we embarked on a half day sprint because it was from 6 AM to 12 noon uh, with a very clear goal in mind as Dr. Caroline has explained. In the Land Rover, um, the driver, also paired up as a, as a research assistant, took us some of the tools you can see on the sit there, the range finder and the compass. And really they explained to us the cause was, if you're able to, if you're able to leverage some of the agile uh, values, which is individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So really in conservation, you have many tools you can employ, but really understanding why, what are we trying to achieve um, in the ecosystem to have balance? What, what is the need for, for the animal? for the governments. This was the key um, question, which for us centered around how Agile would look like. An interesting uh, area, because we were driving across the, the ecosystem, the savannah, uh, and we encountered so many mazes in terms of the fences brought about by human settlements. At some point, we, we got a road sign out of nowhere that this road will be unavailable in 28th, on 28th November, literally two days away. And this causes us to, to think, um, imagine animals <laughs> crossing the savannah and, and meeting the sign. Doesn't mean they would have to inspect and adapt as we would in Agile. Uh, so this was just the reality of um, human wildlife co uh, conflicts that exist in the savannah and how to better manage this through creative um, innovations in, in conservation. So probably Dr. Caroline, any, any thoughts around um, how you as conservationists have helped to address human wildlife um, settlements and the conflict they bring. Dr. Caroline? Not sure she can hear us. Stacy, can you hear me? We just lost. I oh, can hear you. She's muted. Caroline is muted. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I didn't get the question. My internet is a little bit shaky. That is the beauty of being in the wild. So <laughs> we have to be agile. So probably I'll be missing out. So what was the question, Gladys? Was it the- The question was around the maze. We literally had to drive across for so long before we got to the sampling uh, plot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually one of the threats that is facing the ecosystems in Mara is uh, a lot of fencing. People uh, fencing their properties and these uh, creates, um, blocks the distribution of wildlife because it creates a hindrance because uh, as a wild animal, you want free space to roam around. So 
with the erection of fences, this has been really detrimental with one of the biggest threats, especially we have the wildebeest in this particular landscape. So one of the breeding areas of uh, these beautiful species has really been impacted by uh, fences and it's really impacting on the species. So infrastructural development uh, and also conservation, how do we achieve uh, the two, striving that balance. So it's bringing both stakeholders in the different fields, uh, talking together and brainstorming. And that's why I feel Agile presents that particular framework whereby you can be able to integrate various views and uh, come up with a very workable solution because the landscape is getting dynamic, the problems are getting dynamic. So embracing the two and working together. So I felt by engaging with the Agile team, uh, we saw a lot of synergies, a lot of areas where we can be able to ease the communication, avoid the scientific jargon, and just utilize simple language and uh, strive that particular clear communication, all for the purpose of creating this beautiful, pristine environment for wildlife. Thank you, Gladys. Thank you. Speaking of agility and frameworks, uh, we go to apply Scrum, one of the frameworks that uses empirism uh, with the pillars on transparency, inspection, and adaptation. So right here, um, we had product. We had Caroline as our product owner, uh, where in terms of some of the creative livestock management um, efforts they have, some of the innovations they call the GLED effect. And this had various techniques, including pasture utilization, uh, pasture assessment, wildlife distribution and occupancy. So you look at this as different techniques, the Scrum development team, which is Agile, Agile Mavericks right there under the leadership of uh, Dr. Caroline in, in employing some of these techniques. Um, what, I, what, I rec what I recall in pasture utilization, we had a dung index survey just to, to, to sort of measure how the pasture is utilized to, to inform the kind of animals that, that would be there in, in terms of balancing the ecosystem. When I look at pasture assessment, you can see um, the pasture disc meter right there. This is a technique we use to measure the quantity in terms of the biomass of the grass but not being an expert, <laughs> but I learned in, in, in that uh, half day sprint, probably Dr. Caroline, you could expand for us some of these techniques and how you feel this could apply in an agile world. So uh, just to address the various questions, I think it's imperative to devise uh, tools that can be able to address the various questions. So uh, basically as an ecologist, uh, because of the cost implications, we've had to readjust and uh, innovate various tools like the pasture disk meter that Gladys has just mentioned. It's a very powerful and simple tool that gives you the quantity. And uh, of course, by just dropping a pin, you can also look at the species composition, which is the quality. So uh, by doing that, you can be able to look at a particular threshold. Is the uh, grass available that is available? Is it sustainable for both wildlife utilization? An arid and semi-arid landscape where uh, pastoralism is the main source of livelihood. So we have to strive a balance. So we work closely with the conservancy members to advise them on the stocking levels. And of course, the grazing, assessing the grazing pressures in the different uh, areas and advise them in terms of rotational grazing and uh, plant grazing. So they have to be flexible in terms of just knowing you can be able to, uh, to graze to this particular level. So with using those simple tools, which uh, the pastoral communities can be able to adapt easily. I think we've had to leave away the various complicated instruments that we use, but reinventing and coming with something that is workable and is also easily available. So basically, most of our monitoring techniques utilize uh, innovative tools that we've just custom made to be able to link up with uh, just addressing the various questions that we have. Gladys. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Caroline. I'm sitting here with my safari hat uh, virtually, <laughs> and I can hear a lot of, um, customer collaboration over contract negotiation. You mentioned you have lots of stakeholders and it's about empowering your research assistants with, with the why, the goals in, in terms of what you're trying to achieve and then allowing them to be creative and innovative to come up with some of these uh, interesting tools to, to enable you reach that um, ecosystem balance, which, which is sort of the vision or the mission you, you geared towards in, in conservation. Um, the highlight of our day as we finished uh, the different activities, which really was a short sprint. Um, while we were on our way for lunch, we stumbled upon Lol Puppet. Um, hopefully you can see his image right there. Um, 
this is one of the old uh, resident lions in, in Olare Motorogi Conservancy. And uh, he was next to his builder Biskill, but he was so frail and tired, he couldn't really enjoy the kill. And for those who are wondering uh, what was the wilder be still doing, and that was the time during migration, Dr. Carroll empowered us, uh, enlightened us that some of them remain as residents in Masai Mara because of the fences again, they can't get um, to uh, during the migration, so they get stuck, uh, left behind. But sadly, uh, Lol Papit, uh, the lion died two days after we uh, our visit, uh, which was really sad, but Dr. Caroline enlightened us, maybe it wasn't so in terms of the work he'd done in, in restoring the balance. Dr. Caroline? Yeah, so just uh, for the benefit of the audience, Lol Papit is a Maasai word means big hair. You can definitely see the massive men that the male has. So actually it stopped, um, I think it was November 18th. Uh, that is after 15 years of rain. So basically from the land ecology perspective, the genetics had been passed. So basically it, has, it lived a good life. So we have uh, various prides that have been formed uh, that was sired by Lord Puppet. So I believe uh, natural selection has to happen within this particular system. So uh, yeah, it was a wonderful life. <laughs> Thank you. Just reminded me of our joining teams, you know, the team formation cycle that uh, forming, storming, norming, and, and later on adjoining. How, how do we get to the end life of, of our teams uh, working in an agile manner when, when the product out there in the market has, has done its entire life cycle? So that, that for me, I relate a little puppy to some teams in, in agile that need to adjoin when their purpose is sort of done. Um, we'll quickly move into the next section. Uh, which is around social impact. Um, and then we'll invite you to co-create with us in the last part of the section. Uh, so just bringing back the, the discussion around con customer collaboration over contract negotiation. The animals do not exist um, in, a, in a silo, in an island. They exist around a community. And we got to participate in some of the social impact activities led by Dr. Caroline around uh, girls' empowerment in the Masai Mara, as well as the Sunshine Readers Club empowering uh, young mindsets in, in wildlife conservation topics and even agile in how they can co collaborate, co-create towards a common cause. Uh, perhaps uh, Dr. Caroline would like to cover some of this or inspire us with your world. Yeah, so these are the most amazing uh, programs that we have. It's more of a capacity building and reinvesting back to the wonderful people that we work with. So the Girl Empowerment Program, because uh, Supporting a fellow girl, I think it's important. I've come a long way to be Dr. Caroline. So basically a lot of people held my hand. So what a better way to do this than uh, to interact with the young girls and just uh, in, encourage them that uh, at the end of the, the struggle, there's usually greater success. And of course, meeting the great women from Agile Mavericks, I think they were really wow to see that uh, women can really, if you believe in yourself and uh, you push yourself a little bit harder, you can be able to achieve. And of course, you have to have young ambassadors. That's why we have the Sunshine Readers Club, empowering the young kids so that they can be the voice uh, for the future. So we really do a lot of that. And that is something that uh, we believe strongly as Cattle for Conservation program in terms of just uh, trickling down to uh, the young generation. So this brings me back. The reason why we focus on this mostly is uh, based on my experience working within this beautiful landscape and working as an ecologist. It is. It was really disheartening when we had one of the programs where we asked the kids to draw and tell us about yeah their neighboring uh, national reserves, national parks. But most of them just painted lands that were being speared. And uh, really, that really resonated with me well. And then I was like, yeah, these kids need a different exposure in terms of just appreciating nature and wildlife firsthand, the beautiful safari experience. So basically working with partners, working with various uh, uh, groups of people, uh, Agile Mavericks were able to support a trip for the young, girl, young boys and girls to go and have a beautiful safari just the way they did. And uh, it was really, wonderful seeing them appreciate wildlife from a different perspective. And when we asked them to paint their wildlife, they had to paint themselves in very nice Land Rovers, beautiful wildlife in the vast African savanna. And that is the story we want to tell as we research and address uh, various questions and challenges that are facing the system. But of course, 
bearing in mind that all this has to go back to the people. Thank you, Gladys. Thank you. Re reminds me of the 12th Agile principle where on regular intervals, we stop to inspect and, and adapt. Um, when you look at what you've been able to achieve and many other conservationists in terms of um, looking at complexity in terms of the challenges that, that there are and rallying people towards a common cause, in this case, young girls towards uh, dreaming and believing uh, in their future, as well as uh, young kids to feel they have a voice in, in determining how um, the ecosystem would look like. Uh, and and in, when I reflect in this time of COVID, in terms of how agile, it doesn't matter if it's an, an, an empowerment uh, program, if it's wildlife conservation, how really if you all come towards a, a common purpose and, and empower people to believe, we could, re, we could realize um, our dreams and a bigger cause. Um, so when I look at the definition of organizational agility, which is uh, very, very, being very quick to reconfigure how we've always done things, you know, the, the Maasai's have always had their rituals and their culture, but how um, you're able to reconfigure your process, your people in terms of what derives value and, and, and gives you, um, makes you self-fulfilled, fulfilled. That for me is the beauty uh, of agility. So we've done lots of talking. <laughs> in terms of just literally taking you through our entire day, which is a half day, uh, the morning beat in the Savannah, the afternoon in the girls empowerment and the kids program. Allow me to welcome you to the key takeaways and Anastasia, you, you'd help me on this in terms of allowing our audience to participate in terms of what resonated for them. So we, we gave a, a case study for how Agile applies in wildlife conservation as a complex world and the reality of human wildlife conflict. We talked about the, the road signs and the fact that having a product vision and a clear why is what gives us power and how we should steer with transparency, inspection and adaptation. So I'd invite you to just put a sticky in terms of where are we going in your different space? It could be, this was environmental conservation. It could be in this conference. Where are you going? <laughs> how are you going to implement Agile to solve your different challenges in daily life? So feel free to double click on your mural link, not on this screen, and just type out your ideas, your key takeaways for today's session. So if we are having challenges, you can shout out to be helped, but just right click and add a sticky note, then drag it to which topic. And also you can also double click and add text type in. You can also enlarge on your side so that you can be able to see what you're typing. You can zoom in, zoom out to see what you're typing. And also you can raise your questions on the chat via Zoom so that we can read and answer as we are filling in. Thank you, Anastasia. We've actually shared the whole story um, in our, Montau, you, you helped me out on this one, the delegate pack, because we couldn't cover everything <laughs> in this 30 minutes time box, but it's been great. Anastasia probably could read out some of the themes. Anastasia, can you hear me? Okay, oh, sorry, I was, I was on this, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so I was just saying we have, we have bringing Agile into the local community. Agile is all around us. Important to keep in the mind the purpose, the goal and continually, okay, it has moved, I'll go back. So we have also to get the priorities right Great reminder that the world is complex and needs agility beyond our usual focus in the business contents, context. We have to address, address the wider part, impact to the world, agile at home, 
agility is a mindset and we should bring our knowledge to help wherever we can. Okay, great illustration of using agile to bring competing groups together, get the priorities right. It's amazing and humbling. I wish everyone doing Scrum could watch this to see the way you adapt processes to your so important in course <laughs> purpose, not the other way around. Wow, that's great. So balance in everything is so important. So let me go on the other side. So I think after that we can group them. Okay, the last one, important to keep in mind the purpose, goals, and continually reflect how we adapt, improve, how can we adapt or improve collaboratively? So there's also another one, amazing. Okay, I've read that out. Love the word balance. Balance is balance in everything is so important. So there was another compliment sticky. Love the word balance there. Speaking, speaking of balance, it reminds me in, in Agile teams, the balance between autonomy and accountability. I guess this is what Dr. Caroline faces as well with the government stakeholders <laughs> in terms of the conservation uh, and the government projects, uh, sort of how do you strike the balance to ensure we all achieve uh, what is in need for me, well, uh, for the big ecosystem as well. So keep them coming, keep them coming. Oh, you can ask questions so far. Thank you. We have an inspiration section for some of the links and some of the work Dr. Caroline has done and some of the work Agile Mavericks is doing. So cheers to seeing the world from a different perspective, appreciating life and collecting priceless memories. And we'd also love to leave you with a quote by, I'd say the father of agility, but in the world, this is Charles Darwin, um, where he quotes, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. So when you look at this 1809, probably this is where the roots of agility began in the, in the world, right, right, right before even we had some of the Scrum and Agile founders uh, creating the manifesto. So I'll stop sharing this. And I don't know if you have any other takeouts or anyone wants to say anything. We have one minute. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for this uh, global stage uh, in terms of giving us the chance to showcase Agile can indeed apply in wildlife conservation, in your space, anywhere uh, for the common good. 